Welcome to This Week in Morgan County. I'm your host, Russell Mokhyber. Our guest this week is Storm Frame. She's a candidate for the House of Delegates from the 66th District. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me th this morning. Storm, tell us a little bit about your uh, life's history, where you grew up, where you went to school, what you're doing now. So I was born at Jefferson Memorial Hospital uh, and raised in Jefferson County. I uh, attended school at North Jefferson Elementary and Charlestown Middle School and Jefferson High School, and then I went on to get my bachelor's degree at Shepherd University. And then I stayed in the county, I uh, became a teacher, and I've taught um, public school in Jefferson County since 2010. What do you teach? Well, it's varied. So I taught middle school for quite some time, for, uh, and then this past January, uh, more than a year ago, I was able to accept the job as a gifted teacher. So I travel around the county and uh, go to multiple different schools teaching gifted students. Now, what, what is meant by a gifted student? There's a variety of testing that they, that they go through, but part of it is, it is um, IQ. So in, in West Virginia, they, they qualify for special education and enriched instruction. So I provide that enriched instruction for them. And what made you decide to run for office? I've always been active in my community. I've always volunteered. I'm a part of Kiwanis. I grew up in 4-H and have always been a part of 4-H. The 4-H motto is to make the best better, and uh, that's kind of what I've lived my life with. So teaching my students uh, for the past decade, I have told them, you know, to be the change they want to see. You know, you've got to be the change. You have a you have a problem, or you've got to tell us. You've got to talk to people. Two years ago, when the teachers went on strike, when we all organized and we knew that we deserved better, uh, that that service personnel and teachers and bus drivers and uh, state police officers, we all deserved better. We needed our insurance, and we needed the state to to protect us and to make sure that we were. Uh, respected um, so that we have highly qualified teachers. I mean, I have four kids. I want them all to have the best, and I want them in public schools. So we all walked out, and it was uh, during that, the 2018 strike, that I really thought, I really got involved in politics. We spent um, two weeks down in Charleston talking to the legislature. We met with Paul Espinosa. We had done our research, and then we weren't listened to. Um, you know, we, we had to fight and fight and fight. And, and still, we still don't have a long-term solution for our insurance. We still don't, there are still things that we need. Because I hadn't been involved in politics prior to that, I really didn't think that, that we, that teachers could represent ourselves. I had this dream or this vision that the people who went and, and ran for office and, and represented us were of this uh, higher stature. And, uh, and that's just not true. I mean, we need people who are actually in our workforce, who participate in events with us, who are at games with our children, who can listen to our needs and then take them to the legislature and represent what we believe and what we need and what we feel are our issues. On our way back in 2018, you know, we kind of threw out the idea like, well, I could do that, you know, and, um, and so then it just kind of snowballed and it became this thing that we started talking about as a family and, and then I started, you know, to attend more events and talk to more people and I thought, wow, we really could do this. We really could be the change we want to see. We really could make a better, you know, representation of our district and so here I am. Tell us a bit about the district. Is It's a rural district. It's in Jefferson County. It's very rural. It wraps around like a horseshoe around Jefferson County. So it includes Carneysville, uh, Lee Town, Middleway, and um, Ripon, Cable Town, and then um, part of Shenandoah. And uh, so it's, it's very rural. There's a lot of agriculture, a lot of farming, and a lot of horses. So that's primarily our en environment. And we were discussing before the interview that there's not one stoplight. Yeah, in, in the, in in the, the district. whole district. Yeah, you told, I didn't even think about that, but you know, trying to describe it to other people, you know, the other two districts have towns in them. And so, you know, when we're talking about having events this summer and, you know, places that we can meet, we struggle because there aren't really places in the district. But now, yeah, yeah, there's no, not one stoplight. It's pretty interesting. There's a flashing light. But, but not a stoplight. <laughs> You're uh, 
you're running as a Democrat mm -hmm. and unopposed, and you're running against Paul Espinoza, who's in the leadership, a Republican leadership in the House of Delegates. And he was hired um, last year by Rockwell to be their public relations representative. What are your thoughts on that, running against a public relations representative for Rockwell? And tell us about the Rockwell situation. I think that it makes it even more important that we have somebody that we elect that is representative of us. Um, I don't think that somebody who is representing an out-of-country corporation um, who is in charge of their public relations, uh, who's providing messaging for them, is going to go down to the state house and actually represent what the the you know eighteen thousand people who live in his district want. And you know, I think that Rockwell is here. Um, I don't think that there was enough transparency in our government prior. I, I don't think that the um that the due diligence was completed but now that we're you know this far in the process i think that it's just really important that our water is protected and that our air is uh that it, you know there's three elementary schools uh, or three schools um two elementary one right across the street so it's imperative that we have we protect those valuable commodities or you know around and and so our air and water, uh, we have to fight for that, and I just don't think that he will. I don't think that he will have our best interest at heart. I think that he'll have the company's interest at heart. And so, yeah. There was, in the last election, uh, it seems to be a consensus that two delegates, Sammy Brown and John Doyle, were elected because of the anti-Rockwell base in their districts. Mm -hmm. Is there a similar base in your district? And do you expect uh, that people will come out and vote for you because of the Rockwell situation? I think that there is a, a smaller base, but there is still a base. I think that the because it is so rural and you know we have a lot of farms, they're just really worried that their water is going to be contaminated and they're not going to know. Of course, nobody wants that. We, we've seen Flint, Michigan. We don't want to be a Flint, Michigan, right? We don't want, we just don't want that. So I think that the conversation has changed to, you know, just please protect those resources, protect our natural resources so that we can provide and stay in Jefferson County. You know, I said before, like I was born and raised in Jefferson County. It means the world to me. I don't want to see people leaving because of heavy industry. I think industry is important, right? I think light industry is important. I think that we need economic growth in, in Jefferson County. Uh, I think that we have the population to do that. But I think that we need to better our broadband uh, infrastructure. I, I would like to look into community broadband so that we can bring people from the metropolitan area. We have this beautiful, beautiful um, rural environment that people, if we had good internet access, people could telecommute and they could do their jobs from home and that's a booming industry right now. Um, so why wouldn't we take advantage of that? Why wouldn't we support greater broadband connection and, um, and service? So, Speaking of staying in Jefferson County versus leaving, we hear a lot from teachers that they could leave easily to Maryland or Virginia and increase their pay significantly. Mm -hmm. Fifteen to twenty thousand. Why have you decided to stay and what can be done to help teachers in Jefferson County in West Virginia? Well, um, I stay because uh, you know I grew up here. And Jefferson County is truly my home. You could still um, live here and work there and commute. Some people could, do that. Some people do that. Right? Yes, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, and of course they're you know making more money and, um, but for me the involvement of the community, the activities that I want to go to, um, being around my kids, and um, has made that sacrifice worth it. Um, you know, I'm on the same schedule as them. Uh, you know, I talk to. Uh, parents who have a different spring break or different summer schedule, et cetera, and that would just be really difficult for our family. So, um, so there's that. 
I mean, I absolutely think that we need to look into some sort of locality pay. Um, Jefferson County is part of the metropolitan D.C. area. If you work for the federal government in Jefferson County, you have an elevated pay raise or pay based on the fact that you're in metropolitan D.C. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. And the same can be said for those in Morgantown. You know, so... I think that that's definitely something we need to look at, some sort of cost of living, because the cost of living here is very different than the cost of living in part of the other parts of the state. I talked to a teacher. I'm active in the American Federation of Teachers, the AFT union. I actually chartered Jefferson County's AFT, and I was the president there for five years. But at a, one of the conventions, I talked to one of the teachers, and she was talking about a house she had just bought. And... Um, and I said, tell me about it. That's so exciting. And she said, yeah, um, you know, it's on five acres and it's four bedrooms. And she was telling me all about it. And, and I said, oh, my gosh, like that would be almost like 300000 in my area. And she said, what? <laughs> I mean, just oblivious. And, you know, she had paid a fourth of that for this amazing house that she got to live with her family. And it's just that cost of living is just very vastly different. And we're not uh, we're not paying our teachers that we're not. We haven't decided that cost of living should factor in, and I think it should. What are the primary differences, other than Rockwell, um, between you and Paul Espinoza? I support foster care. Uh, he just voted this past week, but prior to adjustments of the bill that he didn't he have voted been against an that advocate. Bill, the foster, yeah. foster care. He voted against the additional $100,000 for the state police so that they could have the protection and I don't see why in a um, you know three hundred million dollar budget that we couldn't find a hundred thousand dollars that the state police officers had asked for uh, so I you know I've been a supporter of that and he's not he speaks of fiscal responsibility and and I think that there's different ways to look at that I think that fiscally responsible is not necessarily tax cuts to to large corporations or inventory tax cuts for out-of-state corporations. I think that it looks more like taking care of our working families and making sure that um, they have their needs met. And, you know, that's, I would say that's one of our vast differences. That's how we uh, are so contradictory. How about on education policy? How do, how mm -hmm. do you differ from him? Well, because I support public education. I think that's a right that we all have. And I, I spent a long time talking about how public education, the freedom to have public education is incredible. You know, there are still countries that don't have that. So why would we take away from that and invest into businesses, invest into private schools? That, that doesn't make any sense. He's a supporter of charter schools. Yes, he's a su part, supporter of charter schools and education savings accounts, which is giving money, taking money from public schools so that children can go to private schools. And, um, and I'm not a supporter of that, nor will I ever be. Uh, I think that our money, if anything, needs to be um, more invested, more of our money needs to be invested into public education. You know, you can't uh, have a lawyer or a doctor or um, a plumber without an educator in their life at some point. And, um, and you know, education is uh, what Mandela education is the weapon that we use to change the world. And that's what we should be investing in. And, and regulating less, trusting our teachers and our educators that they know what they're doing and that they can handle it. So that's where I hope we go with public education in the future. That's where I would like to see us move. And I don't think Espinosa will do that. I think that, I mean, he's, he's voted. His voting record is obvious that he wants charter schools and he's a proponent of ESAs. What is, um, what's your campaigning look like? What are you doing to campaign? Oh. Well, I'm at everything, which I already was, but now I wear my button. And um, just talking to people, uh, we're going to knock on all the doors. Um, You're going to knock on all the doors in the district? Yeah. How many is that? Uh, <laughs> um, it's about 5,000, I think, wow. um, that we plan to knock on. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm a hard worker. 
And so I think that the way that we win this district is that we get out in the community and we talk to people and that we hear them out and we let them know that I'm not just doing this because I'm running a campaign. I'm doing this because I care about our, our, the citizens of Jefferson County and our needs. And I want those to be represented at the state house. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of um, a lot of door knocking, a lot of wearing out shoes, and talking to the people. And have you started that already? Have you started door knocking? No, we haven't yet um, because I don't have a primary opponent. Um, we are going to events right now. We'll start in April. Good luck on the campaign trail. Thank you. So we've much. we've invited your opponent, S. Paul Espinosa, to come on our show. I've not heard from him yet, but we have until November. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we could have you back sometime if things heat up. Yeah, I'd love to come back. All right. Definitely. Well, thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for watching This Week in Morgan County.